Hello, you plonkers, and welcome back to another video on the Druzy channel. I'm back here again with the ping. Oink, oink. Oink, oink. I've just done a video talking about Buckley's reign as coach. So today we're going to be looking at where it started, Jesse. It started in 2012, the game against Hawthorne, which they lost. So they finished fourth that season, started it off with the loss. I've done this for the uh, Damien Hardwick as well. The Damien Hardwick, Sir Damien Hardwick, talking about his first signing 22. It's just interesting to see what list they started with to where they are now. Collingwood probably had a better list when they started. Lots Definitely. of stars in this team. Definitely. We contrast to some other clubs when they, or coaches when they take over a club. They, of course, made the grand final in 2011 going down to the Cats, so this was a pretty good team to begin with. Yep. And he, he stunk it up, didn't get a flag in his reign. But let's look at the tools that he had to start his Collingwood reign. We're starting it off with the jolly good fellow, <laughs> Darren Jolly. <laughs> He's a two-time premiership player. I did not know he played for Sydney. Oh yeah, of course, yep. I didn't know that. Played 29 games under Buckley, retired in 2013, and he went on the TV show, The Block, the TV renovation show, with his wife, who he later divorced from, and later had custody battles with for his children. This is very personal. <laughs> it is, it's sad, but it was well documented, like when he was going through these custody battles, because he, he had to go to court for it and everything, because he had like restraining orders and, and fucking lots. So he's, he's stunk it up since leaving football. Um, Poor Darren Jolly, he's, he's been stitched up. Yeah. Jolly by name, not by nature. <laughs> <laughs> We're after a good start. The next player we've got is a particularly decorated one. You've got Dane Swan, one of the champs of this Collingwood side, added 83 games under Nathan Buckley. I think he was a uh, five-time All-Australian Premiership player and Brownlow medalist, of course. Nowadays, he has a podcast and talks a lot of shit on Twitter. The next player was Luke Ball. Ball by name, Ball by nature. <laughs> <laughs> so Luke Ball obviously played for St Kilda before, made the shift to Collingwood, was a premiership player. Lots of these players are premiership players and we're not going to say all of them are, but I'll say it for this one. Luke Ball, premiership player. <laughs> Analysis. Um, he was like the president of the AFL Players Association, I think at some point when he was a player. Post football, he ended up working at Essendon as like a, a programs manager or something like that. I think he was the head of the VFL side. Uh, so he started there in 2018 and got cut in 2020 due to Ouch. coronavirus. Ball shafted by Corona. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Next up, we've got the infamous Heath Shaw, who played 41 games under Buckley at Collingwood before transferring to GWS. And I look at my notes here, and you've written, his relationship with Buckley broke down just like Jesse's last relationship. Sure did, buddy. <laughs> he retired last year after a seven year stint at GWS and is now playing for East Keylaw in the Essendon District Football League. He was a great player of the game, to be honest. Mm. He probably had his best years at Collingwood uh, in those last years and then early years at GWS and yeah, really built a club culture at GWS. He does well. a bit of media work now with Dale Thomas, the Heater and Daisy show as well, that oh. I'm saying. Yeah, there you go. Can't Fuck you and your research. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Tooby is another player who was in this side, and he played 72 games for Nathan Buckley before retiring in 2016. And Jesse, he hasn't been seen since, so this is a public service announcement. If anyone sees Alan Tooby, call Crime Stoppers. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Next, we've got Travis Cloak, who played 107 games for Buckley, and this was sort of the peak of his powers. Travis Cloak was kind of one of the biggest power forwards in the competition. Mm -hmm. He was the leading goal scorer for their team in 12, 13, and 14, and then he finished his career at the Western Bulldogs, and he kind of, kind of petered out a little mm -hmm. bit, didn't reach those heights at the Bulldogs. He now works at the Magpies in their academy program. Hopefully he's not teaching goal kicking, because he was fucking terrible mm. at kicking goals. One of the yeah. worst set shots. But one of the best contested marks in the yeah. game at that time as well. So it was, yeah, it was a strange dynamic. He'd miss shots from like 20 out right in front or would slot them from like 50 out. Yeah, um, yeah. one of those weird players that just can't kick a set shot. It was like, it was like he was wearing Velcro gloves though. He just plucked those bitches. <laughs> Harry O'Brien, Harry Lumumba. One person. I nailed that. Yes, he, uh, he played 64 games under Nathan Buckley. So he left for Melbourne for a couple of seasons uh, before retiring and Somewhat of the downfall of Nathan Buckley almost stemmed from Harrieta Lumumba. He was the bloke who brought up the racial allegations that Collingwood had a racist culture. He was called many names and, uh, yeah, had a pretty disgusting time, by the sounds of it, at Collingwood. So he, he accused Collingwood of having a racist culture, which put Eddie Maguire under the chopping block. Maguire left, who was... Buckley's right-hand man. So this player in this starting 22 probably come back to bite Buckley on the ass. Not ri literally, just figuratively or like metaphorically or one of those ones. It certainly put a lot of pressure on the football club, which may have led to uh, maybe the downfall in performance, but certainly like uh, a desire for action, and that may have forced Buckley out a little bit. So it's probably a contributing factor somewhat. Yeah. It cracked the foundation, some may say. Mm -hmm. He now lives in Los Angeles. So born in Rio, moved to Melbourne, 
now in Los Angeles. Mans is living it up. Next up, we have one of my favourite players who's still in the competition, Scott Penderbury, who played 202 games under Nathan Buckley. Apparently only missed 16 games under his reign. So really, a lot of play with longevity, a lot of durability, which is really important. He's uh, obviously been a regular in the Collingwood side since about 07, uh, and you know played pretty much full seasons since that time as well. Obviously, he's a Collingwood champion, one of the all-time greats, probably one of the best players I've seen to not win a Brownlow. He was also Buckley's captain of choice after Nick Maxwell departed the club. Dale Thomas, another player in this starting 22. A cult figure at Collingwood. I, he used to be one of my favourite players when I was younger because I could distinguish him. Had the dreadlocks and that. He only played 25 games under Nathan Buckley before going to Carlton, weirdly enough. Mm. Followed Malthouse there. Side. He did. He did. Sucks for him. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, imagine playing for Carlton. No success. I can't really talk, though. <laughs> yeah, you never played for Carlton. <laughs> Since retiring, he was on the reality DP show, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Currently plays for the Sorrento Sharks in Victoria, so just another ex-AFL player just being fat, playing local footy, and probably just chopping up, to be honest. Yeah, true. And, of course, he's the other half of that Heater and Daisy show, like the uh, mentioned previously. Yes. So, uh, yeah, do your fucking research. <laughs> he's now also the face of points bet with Billy Brownless. Helping out teammates like Heath Shaw and Nick Maxwell with their gambling addiction. Next up, we've got Ben Reid, who had 99 games under Nathan Buckley at the Collingwood Footy Club. His brother is still playing at the Sydney Swans, but he has retired. And uh, Drewzy's notes say, probably just spending his days reading. Get it. I'm doing my own notes next time. (laughs) Tyson Ballsack. I mean... Tyson Goldsack is the next player we're going to talk about. He was in the starting 22. Goldsack by name, Goldsack by name. <laughs> 96 games under Buckley, and his last game was your favourite game of all time, maybe. 2018 Grand Final. Just come back in for that game. like They, they were in need of a, of a back, and he came in. Did an ACL earlier that year and then played the finals. Ridiculous mm. effort. Yeah, good hustle. He was redrafted in 2020 to Port Adelaide, which I didn't know. I didn't know that either. Yeah, either. neither. Because he didn't play a game. Kind of rings a bell. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I did my research, obviously, because I'm, I'm a thorough researcher. Right. Big dick honcho. So yeah, now he just works developing the young talent at Port Adelaide, mm-hmm. um, and they're fucking doing all right. The young yeah. talent at Port Adelaide, and he has his own energy drink, which is called Newtonic. <laughs> <laughs> Get some of this gold sack up here. <laughs> Girls or gold sack, oh my god. It's called your tonic, it's meant to be nice. Next up, we've got a fairly forgettable player, Chris Dawes. His last cl- uh, season at the club was Buckley's first year, so he only managed 23 games. He then moved to the Melbourne Footy Club, added 50 games before retiring in 2016, and you've written, was last seen selling windows. Oh no, I mean doors. Fuck these nights. <laughs> Martin Clark was a player who I forgot about, the Irishman, who played for Collingwood for two stints between 2007 to 2009, went back to Ireland, played uh, Gaelic football uh, for a couple of years, and then come back 2012 to 2014. Multi-sport professional, even though Gaelic football is actually not a professional sport. Did you know that? Yeah, it's good facts. Thanks. <laughs> he had to retire in 2014. He got uh, Addison's disease. No, it's not chlamydia. It's a, it's a serious going, disease. What was he going there? <laughs> It's a disease that pretty much just zapped all of his energy, he said, when he was playing. Um, so, yeah, couldn't recover from games and whatnot. And it ultimately ruined his career. He was last seen in a pub drinking Guinness because he's Irish. I wasn't creative making these notes, Jesse. Yes. All right, moving on. You were rushed. Next up, we've got Jared Blair, who added 121 games under Nathan Buckley before being delisted at the end of the 2018 season. He currently now works in operations and business developments at ID Developments. It's a shame he's not a project manager, otherwise people would be like... Hey Blair, which project? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. This is why this guy should write the notes and not me. <laughs> Subscribe to my channel. Another player who's never been remembered, Luke Rounds. Played one game this season, never played again. That's it. A break in the video to bring you your sponsors, no one, because I have no clout. But the other camera died, so it sort of looks like we switched up the sort of scene, but we're still going, we just gotta switch up the cameras. Who's next? Next up, we have got Lachlan Keith, who is now, of course, playing for the GWS Giants in their back line, but he added 35 games to his Collingwood tally under Nathan Buckley, and one of the more interesting or sort of, like, noteworthy things about his career is that he tested positive for a banned substance in 2015. Drug cheat. With Josh Thomas. Not drug cheat, just he likes to have a good time. Ben Sinclair played 59 games under Buckley, Jesse, and then hey, he got he got delisted eventually. Mm. Into the real heavy hitters on this part of the video. (laughs) He's now an American actor, director, and producer. Much like Jake Lloyd from the Sydney Swans who went back in time and played a young Anakin Skywalker. Next up, we've got Do Re Mi Fasolo. (laughs) 
Alex Fasolo. He uh, played 88 games under Nathan Buckley. It was a pretty good sort of medium forward for them, but then he went and joined. You start trying to work that joke out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bring me for Sola Tida. Oh, no, yeah. I yeah. thought it was like That's a Michael rough. Jackson. Like, Don't oh. bring me anything. No. <laughs> no. Not even close. These no. fucking kids. But yeah, Fasolo couldn't really sort of recapture a lot of talent. Obviously, he had some mental health issues that sort of plagued his career. Moved to Carlton, only played three more games, and then he retired at the end of 2019. Jackson Payne, another heavy hitter mm. who played for Collingwood for six games. Got delisted a couple of years later. Played for Brisbane for ten games. Got delisted. Painful ending to his career. I was going to say, I feel like the window joke would probably be more applicable to Jackson Payne. He Imagine. was last seen selling windows. <laughs> we rescued that. <laughs> Next player on the list is Peter Yagmore, who only played two AFL games, both in Buckley's first year as head coach. In his first game, he got zero touches, which is wild. It's not something you see too often. Uh, he got delisted in 2014, unsurprisingly, and uh, he currently works for the AFL Queensland in the Indigenous program sector. Still making a difference, so good yeah. on him. Yeah. Kept following his passion. It was strangely nice to him. We didn't mean to all the others. <laughs> yeah, but he's actually doing something in the AFL sector. He's not fucking Blair Witch Project managing Making projects. movies in America. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get so much hate for this yeah. video. No, it's funny, though. Paul Season also played in his starting 22. Played 49 games under Buckley, not quite cracking the 50. He got traded to Adelaide, obviously, where he played in the 2017 Grand Final and then got clapped. By the Richmond Tigers. I was going for Adelaide in that game. I don't know why. I fived you. But yeah, he's still playing and uh, still doing pretty well. Yeah, probably, actually, probably hitting his prime at the moment. Really honest. good trade for Adelaide. Mm. Yeah, he's doing well. His last scene planting seeds in a farm. Oh, seeds, planting man. seeds in a man. <laughs> oh, that doesn't work. That's his name. The final player on this list is the infamous steel side bottom who played 182 games under Nathan Buckley. He was all Australian in 2018 and of course was runner up in the brown low to Tom Mitchell. He's still smashing it. Probably not quite on that same elite level this year. Mm -hmm. The whole team's kind of been struggling but you know he's still a really good player at something like 30 years old. Yeah. So who's still in this team from that team? Pendlebury side, side bottom. bottom. Is that it? So Buckley finished his reign with two players that he started with. So he got rid of 20 of that first starting 22. Will Buckley be back in the AFL system? Maybe. I think he could do media for a little while, maybe go back mm. afterwards, but don't know. But that's gonna wrap up the video. Jesse's gonna do one of these on Adam Simpson. So for whatever reason, if you'd wanna watch some Eagles content. Yeah, nothing Eagles content, that you'll find it on True Footy. Yeah, it'll be out in the next couple days. Bye. Bye. Go, 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 go